The diode is an essential component of modern electronics and its main characteristic is that it only allows the passage of electricity in a single direction. And maybe you have already used it but, do you know how a diode works internally? There are dozens of types of diodes but in this video we are going to focus on two, the first that was invented, the vacuum diode, and one of the most used today, the semiconductor diode. To understand how a vacuum diode works we have to understand a strange behavior of metals, which was discovered by Frederick Guthrie in 1876, who in one of his experiments saw how, when heating an iron sphere with a negative charge in a vacuum it lost its charge, whereas in the opposite case, when heating a sphere with a positive charge, no variation occurred. This behavior is known today as thermionic emission. This happens because, at the atomic level there are electrons which are negatively charged, that can move and in this particular case, when excited by heat, they are released from the material in the form of ions. Years later in 1880, Thomas Edison, without knowing about the work of Frederick Guthrie, rediscovered this phenomenon while trying to develop the electric bulb. The problem that he wanted to solve was that, when he turned on the bulbs, it started to get dark inside. And by trying different alternatives he realized that if he put inside a positively charged metal plate, the dark material was deposited only on this plate and not on the glass of the bulb. In this configuration, since the filament was releasing electrons, we will call it a cathode, while on the other hand, as the plate was receiving electrons, we will call it anode. In this way, by having a cathode and an anode, the assembly was known as a diode. But there is a detail, it was not Thomas Edison who claimed his invention since he only saw it as a way to remove the dirt inside the bulbs. It was John Ambrose Fleming who gave him the utility for which we know it today. He realized that, by integrating these components into a circuit, the diode only allowed the passage of the current in one direction, making it an ideal component to rectify alternate signals, or also as a current regulating device, as the amount of charge that passed from the anode to the cathode was directly related to the system temperature. However, there were several reasons why vacuum diodes were replaced. They needed to be heated to function and therefore necessarily spent energy, besides requiring a time to reach the temperature at which they began to release the electrons. Its size was relatively large. The glass dome was a very fragile component, and, like incandescent bulbs, their life was not very long. But, with the semiconductor diodes, all those problems disappeared. All of them. They are small, they do not require extra energy, they are resistant, they have a longer life and its reaction speed is almost instantaneous. The way that this type of diode works is using. Exactly. Semiconductor materials. These are materials that act as electrical insulators, but that under certain circumstances they are able to act as conductors, for example when applying a magnetic field, a certain temperature or being impacted by radiation, among other factors. Specifically, semiconductor diodes use two semiconductors. Although they have the same matrix or base material, such as silicon, one of semiconductors will have an excess of free electrons and for that reason it is known as n-type semiconductor, for negative, while the other semiconductor will have a lack of electrons or gaps, and for that reason it is known as a positive p-type semiconductor. Having these two semiconductors together, nothing happens. But if we connect the positive pole of a battery to the n-type semiconductor, nothing happens either, because the electrons are going to try to move towards the positive terminal, and therefore there will be no current flow through the diode. Now, if we reverse the connections, the electrons are going to try to move in the opposite direction, and they will pass to the p-type semiconductor, crossing it until reaching the conductor cable at the other side. In theory, only with these components our diode should work. But to have a really functional product, a layer of insulation is added over the components to prevent them from making undue contact, and also a harder layer to protect the whole system from mechanical wear. Currently there are many types of diodes for different situations and perhaps one of the best known is the light-emitting diode or also known as the LED lamp. 
but we will leave that for a future episode.